fish that you guys can smell through the, the video. Oh, There's almost no smell better than that. Here's the tatter. Definitely not something you want to stick your dog in or anything like that. Morning, guys. It is Saturday. This is what I'm going to need. We're getting ready to cut some hay. The disc buying out and had a couple grease circs that I didn't get to because of how it was parked. You couldn't back to, get back to them. I got one up here on the tongue I gotta get and have to remove a cover on it, which is really a pain. Gotta get under this cover right here. Get the cover removed, right there's where we need to grease. That was way more difficult than it needed to be, for sure. All right, let's see if I can get down here without breaking a hip. Okay, so the other thing we gotta do, take it out of transport mode, which is basically the cylinder locks. You pull this keeper pin, you pull this out, flip it over, and this is just a storage place up here, basically, so we don't lose it. That's it. truth first day of hay season for us all right let's go up and down all right we're good guys i want you guys i want you guys to be thinking what you think the yield's gonna be i want to have a little contest and uh, see who can get the closest on average, make about 50 pound square bed, so you can go bales or tons per acre, whichever one you, you want to do. Right, that little knob right there we just went over, that's the worst of the field. Uh, I think that's actually where they borrowed some dirt when they built the barn up there. See, this is really good right up here ahead of us. Made two rounds around the field. I'm just gonna check everything, make sure, everything, make sure everything's doing all right. Check my cut height. I thought I had it as high as I could go, but I don't think it is. And I like, especially on first cut, I like to get it as high as I can cut it. It gives me a little bit more stubble for my hay to sit on because the ground's always wet. If you can see here, this is a pretty high spot in the field, and and uh, in that that soil is is very moist. So I'm going to check that real quick, give you guys a little view of the, the hay, just for reference. I know really height doesn't have a whole lot to do with it, but I'm not a tall guy. I'm only 5'9", 5 5'8", 5 5 There's the orchard grass. Here's a sprig of alfalfa that didn't fall down. It's up to just about chest height. I know, I know, it's a little far along, but you gotta work with what you're given as far as the uh, weather and everything goes. All right, so the way you adjust this, the further this way you go, the more it tilts the header down, the further back you go, the more it tilts the header up. And I wanna tilt the header up as much as I can. Anyways, this is in the circuit with the up-down cylinders. So when you put pressure on it to lift it up, it puts, pressure to this cylinder which picks the header up now whenever you let it down it lets it down well this here is a stop so the further back it is the less this can travel so you can see right here's how far down it was going now this here it might move a little bit for it for it to seat on this pin but other than that it won't move all right and i know another question you guys are going to ask why don't you spread that hay out as much as you can well two two main reasons Number one is this gives this and this big area here in between them 
chance for the sun to dry it out. If you cover that up, that'll never dry. The other reason is, uh, this is a 12 foot disc vine and I've got a, I don't know, a four basket chrome tether. And if I spread this all the way out, it won't reach both rows. So, I, I especially with a tether, it makes more sense to wind roll it a little bit. And then tomorrow I'll probably come in and I'll spread it. And this one day I'll really give this ground a chance to dry out a lot. And, and uh, then whenever I spread it, then it's not soaking up moisture from the ground. Then the other reason is, if you see, I've driven down this one here. You see no tracks on it. I can straddle that with my tractor. And with this being a, a center pivot, I can adjust that when I go around turns and stuff. And that lets me stay straddle on my previous wind roll, and that really helps it dry. Because anyway, if you make hay, you know, anywhere you run on your wind roll, it ain't drying. And so I just want to show my stubble height after I, I lengthened it. It's probably, uh, you know, four inches, I would say. I wanted to check under here. We have no wrappage, if that's even a word. So last year, I was getting in my really rank stuff when it was down and I was going into it. So it was up in this, this direction. It was actually wrapping up on this. There's, this is the drive shaft here. It's got a cover. Well, it was actually wrapping up on this. And if you see these pieces right here, they, they were wore out. So this morning before I started, I actually welded uh, a new chunk of angle iron on there. Uh, and that really, I think that's what has made the difference, honestly. Again, here's the wind rose. And I know. I came out here to this field and scouted and I, I could barely find any Timothy brought. Now you look out here and it's it's just tall as the alfalfa. It's crazy. We're running about seven, seven and a half miles an hour. Check this hay a little bit. See now this here, a little bit drier. This this crop's a little bit more mature. It is a lot thicker, but it's more mature, so it doesn't have quite as much moisture in it. Also, this is probably the highest point on the entire property. So the soil's a little bit drier, the hay's a little bit drier. It's actually a little bit later in the day, so that makes a big difference too. But uh 
Here is the windrow coming out of the disc bind. Pretty good size. And here is the hay. Now again, I'm five, eight, five, nine. I'm standing straight on my, flat on my feet. You see where it's at here. The whole field's like that. That's not just one clump. You see, that's incorrect. We're probably too tall. You see it compared to the neck of the disc line. Uh, it is a little bit far along, but we're all at the mercy of Mother Nature, right? All right, let's get back to cutting. Get this finished up. You can see all the seed heads out there, mostly woods and grass. Got some Timothy, alfalfa. That's it. We got everything cut here. Uh, I think roughly 17 or 18 acres, give or take. Because that over there, really, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how much that is, but we'll see. Uh, so now, it's a little bit of a waiting game. Got to get it. Wait for the weather and Mother Nature to do her job. Dry this stuff out. Uh, this is Saturday. I'm hoping I can bail it Tuesday. We do have Wednesday that's supposed to be mostly dry. There's a slight chance of rain later in the day on Wednesday. This is the day after we cut. Um, I really wish that you guys could smell through the, the video because Oh man, there's almost no smell better than cut hay. It smells incredible. So here's Anyways. an example of our dew. Droplets on there. We have to wait for that to burn off. Um, you know, you try to keep a little bit of toughness when you ted so you don't lose leaves. But if I was to ted it right now, all that that lands on the bottom at the end of the day today, you can see your hand under there and it'll still be wet. You only have to let it dry, but you want to tet it before it gets crispy. Uh, Dad has the tetter. He has a field he's going to tet and then bring it over here. So we might be pushing it on how dry it is. Uh, if we have to, we might tet the rest of it tomorrow. Running around pretty good, got the chrome. Dad's video on me here. This is the next day after cutting. Uh, it's a little bit drier on top than what I like, but Dad just got back. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of leaf loss. However, it's either that or I don't get it dry. So, uh, I moved the chance of rain up a day. I thought I had till Wednesday. Now I just have to get it bailed by Tuesday. So, we only got two days after this. Bottoms of these windrows are sopping wet. I'm talking like there's actually water dripping off of them. So we gotta get it spread out as soon as possible. Down. Got a rope here with stoppers on it or with locks on it. Let's take a look at this real quick here. The untatted. So the untatted, you can see the grass is dry on top. Some of the leaves on the alfalfa is a little bit crispy right now. I like, I like to smash them, they won't fall off. I can feel it here in the crunch, but if you get down in here, flip this over, you see it's green as can be. Uh, this field here is actually drying way better than the other field. This one didn't have as much moisture in the ground. Uh, it wasn't as thick, wasn't as heavy, uh, a little bit more mature. So this is going to be drier quicker. This can bail. That over there by the house, that little four acre patch, the first stuff I cut will probably be the last to ba that I can bail. Here's the tatter. Definitely not something you want to stick your dog in or anything like that. Sitting back here in the backfield now. This is uh, the more mature orchard grass. 
and uh, much thicker. Uh, well, this is significantly drier. Sorry about that. Simply because it's much more mature. I think. Uh, I'm tatting it out because I I love to just leave it, but I, I don't want I can't can't stand to take the risk of not getting it dry and it getting rained on. So we're tatting it. Uh, slow going. This is the rough field because it's going going basically the opposite direction that it was planted. Alright, we're heading up to the house. We're uh, we'll run up there. We're gonna kind of check out the rake a little bit. I think I'm gonna load up the kids and the wife, Bethany, and we'll uh, we're gonna go for a little hike this afternoon, this evening. Uh, not much I can do with the hay besides let it dry. Pretty well got stuff ready. The bale is ready. The disc bind was ready. We're done with it. This is ready. We're done with it. I'm gonna leave this hooked up because. That field there by the house, I may tet it again tomorrow morning before the dew lifts uh, because we're going to have trouble getting it dry, I can already tell. Uh, now I know there's probably a lot of people, uh, not really a lot of people watching this because not very many people watch my videos, but there's a lot of people out there that wonder why the, why the heck you tet. Well, when you're here where we're at, high moisture, high, I mean these are low humidity days and uh, you see how much dew there is. I'm going to show you right here. See the little droplets on there? So when you got that much dew on, on a low humidity day, I mean, you, you got to combat that. And that's a low humidity day. This, it, these last two days we got to dry in is going to be higher humidity. It's going to start creeping up. Uh, pretty well, that's what we're used to is the higher humidity, but... Uh, you know, on a high humidity day, we may have dew stay on to one, two, sometimes even three, maybe a little later in the afternoon. So you can't even begin to think about bailing before that because it's tough. And then you don't get much drying because you only have from there until the dew starts setting back in to dry. So, you know, everybody's got their own struggles. That's ours. I know there's a lot of people that that out west you got to worry about getting it too dry here not so much you do a little bit you know you don't want to uh, what we have to do is we have to balance the part of the hay that's dry with the part that's not dry and so you know do you do you let it sit wait hope it gets dry if it doesn't you get it rained on or do you go ahead and tet it uh, to get it dry and lose half your leaves because the half that's already dry is going to get the leaves knocked off. Well, me personally, I would rather lose half my leaves than lose the whole crop. So, uh, but we're sitting pretty good as long as the weather don't change too much more. They did move the rain up a day, but we had five days, so hopefully we can get a dry in four. We'll see. Feels like money, Cade. We do too. Yep, yep, yep.